Hey guys, continuing on my quick start guides for each of these different heroes that all cost 2000 gold. This is a series meant for new and returning players who want to fill out their roster with strong heroes and builds that can absolutely have a huge impact in games. Unfortunately, we're on kind of one of the weirder heroes in this list because she is a hero that is a little bit difficult to add a lot of impact into the game, but the build that I'm going to give you is going to allow you to at least top the healing charts, reduce the enemy's damage, as well as have a little bit of utility that you can add to your team. So let's get right into it with what Lili does. Lili is a healer and considered one of the easiest heroes in the game, one that oftentimes people recommend to new players. Um, the reason that she's so easy is because you don't need to aim her heals. She will simply heal whoever has a green circle going around them. So in this case, it's going to heal this target. If I take damage um, and I walk away, it's going to heal myself. And it will always heal the lowest health target that's in the range of your healing brew. So in this case, I'm the lowest health target in the range. And when I move towards this target, he's the lowest health in the range. Throwing off a Q will heal a decent amount. It's a rather low heal on its own. It's got a four second cooldown, um, prioritizes heroes. It says it, it heals other allies, but it really doesn't. Uh, it used to heal minions and it used to heal mercenaries. Um, now I believe it only heals summons that are clones and stuff that are treated as heroes. Um, either way, doesn't really matter. Your next ability is called Cloud Serpent. Summons a Cloud Serpent on an allied hero that attacks nearby enemies every second. Each attack deals 57 damage and heals the ally for 44. It's a decent heal that you can throw that will heal something like a diver or a tank um, that might be getting a little too far away from you. So it's great to throw this out either when you need extra healing on a target or if you see a target that's about to jump into their team like an Illidan or a Genji or even certain tanks or bruisers. Your final ability is called Blinding Wind. It's a 12 second cooldown ability. You throw a ghost gust of wind at two targets. It deals a decent amount of damage and it blinds them for 1.7, sorry, 1.5 seconds. Makes it to where their basic attacks miss. So if Arthas comes and attacks me, you can see that he deals, um, it's not showing how much damage he deals, but he deals a decent amount per auto attack. If I use this, he, he begins to miss his auto attacks. And, uh, and so where some of her abilities seem to have rather long cooldowns as she has just a one heal, it heals a small amount and it has a four second cooldown. Your W has an 11 second cooldown and your E has a 12 second cooldown. Those can be reduced by your trait, which is called fast feet. Upon taking damage, your basic ability cooldowns refresh 50% faster and you gain 10% movement speed. Um, by taking a little bit of damage, you can reduce your cooldowns. I like to take damage by small effects, things like Arthas's uh, e. I can tap it for just a second and keep my cooldowns low without taking a lot of damage from it. You see, I'm just walking in and out to lower the cooldown of my abilities. Um, I'm not staying in his trait for very long. I'm just walking in enough to where I get those cooldowns lower. And that allows me to get a lot of effectiveness against uh, this, like something like an Arthas or a Blaze that has very small damage that I can trigger this multiple times. You don't need to overthink this. It's just going to naturally be getting value whenever you're playing Lili, but it allows you to play Lili a little bit more aggressive. So with that being said, let me talk a little bit about the builds that I recommend on Lili. The first build I'm going to recommend is purely for increasing your healing numbers, and that is going to be taking free drinks at level 1. Healing Brew's cooldown is reduced by 1 second, and its mana cost is refunded if it heals a hero under 50% health. This talent, if you actually do the math and you combine the extra uh, cooldown reduction on Fast Feet, is one of the best numbers-wise talents in the game. Um, it in effectively can increase your healing by anywhere between 50 and 66%, um, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. Um, since even most level 16 talents for damage dealers only increase your damage by 30%. So to have that power on a, on a level 1 talent is incredible. Um, so this talent is great. Level 4... Uh, we're going to be taking Surging Winds. We want to increase our spell power, which will increase the amount of healing that we do. You could go with this the Serpent's uh, Sidekick. That's also going to increase the healing that you do. We kind of want to avoid things like Safety Sprint. Um, 
We're not going to be taking a lot of trait talent, so we don't really want to worry about that. But the other reason why this is good is it reduces the cooldown of your blind. So it's not just that spell power, but it's also the cooldown. So you get more blinds. And again, we we have a, a cooldown reduction that's often going to be out. So this is going to increase our blind uptime against a lot of the heroes that will be common in these ranks. Level 7, the meta talent is the cleanse, but as you're learning the game, I would rather you guys not focus so heavily on landing a cleanse. I would rather you guys focus more on learning good positioning and learning good ability and mana usage. So we're going to instead be taking the good stuff. The good stuff is going to add an extra 92 healing over 3 seconds, and it's doubled while fast feed is going, which will be going throughout most fights. Level 10, we're going to be going Jugs of a Thousand Cups. What this ultimate ability does is you can activate it to start throwing heals off on your team and it will constantly heal the lowest health target. Keep in mind that there is a little bit of a delay between when you first cast this ability and that first jug actually lands. You can see I activate it and we have one, two, on almost three seconds. I would say about two seconds before the first one lands. So this ability should be casted about two seconds before someone actually needs the healing. I'll often cast it at the start of a fight, even when everyone's at full health, because if you turn off this ability early, you actually get a reduced cooldown. So let's say I activate this ability and realize we don't actually need it, I'll turn it off and get a 30 second cooldown, and if I let it go its full duration, and we have someone get healed for the full duration of it, it'll be at a 63 second cooldown. Um, so you can see right, or sorry, 65 second cooldown. Um, and so that's kind of the, the thing about using this early into a fight is you can always activate it later um, to cancel it and get a lower cooldown. Generally, this is a really, really powerful ult because it can prioritize and heal one person that's taking a lot of damage or it could spread out and heal a lot of different people. So I really like this um, talent. I think it's very, very powerful. Level 13. Blinding Wind slows heroes. I like this talent because it allows a little bit more utility, especially with the lower cooldown on your Blinding Wind. Um, but the other talents can be very good as well. Increasing the blind duration can increase the blind uptime. So if you're going against like a Twin Blades Varian or a Butcher or an Illidan, then potentially this will be more valuable because it locks them down for much longer. Level 16, I like two for one. You are going to be triggering free drinks, so you get a lower cooldown on it. You're going to be triggering um, the additional healing. It's just so good, but it allows you to heal two people at once, but it increases the cooldown by one second. Keep in mind that one second is likely going to be removed from the free drinks, because if you're healing two people at a time, you'll probably be hitting one person that's below 50%. And then level 20, I like to upgrade the jugs. The healing two people at a time, as long as you don't get interrupted, can save almost any team fight. And so the basic idea of this build on Lili is to throw out your W off cooldown and use your Q off cooldown. You're going to save your E for either slowing people or you're going to save your E for getting that extra value on uh, the blinds portion of it. So you wait until a butcher charges in, you wait until he gets his mark on someone, and then you're going to blind him and you're going to out heal the damage that he does while he's blinded. And then you'll be able to kill him. Right as a team fight starts getting serious, you're going to pop your ultimate and heal two people at once for a significant amount of healing. Right as the team fight's pretty much won, you're going to turn that off. You're going to throw out your W, your Q, your blind, and you will be able to win most fights. As long as you're at full health, I like to kind of step into damage a little bit if there's any damage that's just kind of sitting on the ground. Um, or just kind of get hit by something extra like over here. Or get hit by a minion. Or any, any damage you take will trigger your fast feed. And that's how you play Lili as a dominant healer. You will top the healing charts with this build. Now, there is another build if you want to play a little bit more aggressive. And if you're going against a lot of basic attack heroes, this build can be rather powerful. Uh, so I'm going to show it to you, but I'm not going to talk too much about it. So what you do instead is level 1, you're going to be taking Wind Serpent. Wind Serpent is going to... Make it to where your W will also apply a blind. Then you can take either the reduced cooldown on blinds or you can increase the duration of Wind Serpent since you're going to be focusing on casting Wind Serpent every time. And you're going to take Wind Serpent again so that it heals more um, and it's going to hit additional heroes. Then at this level, because you're going to be lacking a lot of the healing, I still recommend Jugs. But if your team's really dominant, you could go with uh, Water Dragon. 
at this level, you can go with just about anything. I would recommend um, making it to where your blind hits more or your blind has more duration. But the slow is not bad. And then we go with the increased healing. And the goal with this build is essentially to throw your W out on your tank, which will then throw blinds out at the nearby heroes. And then you're going to wait till that blind is over and you're going to blind again with your blind. And once that blinds over, you're going to be pretty close to your next W. And you can permanently blind about one to two people, or at least have a 70% uptime on blind. Uh, level 20, we usually go Mistweaver, because you're picking this against sustained damage dealers usually. And you're going to just be throwing off your Mistweaver left and right. And you're going to be throwing off your blinds left and right. Now, the cool part is as long as your W is hitting a target, you can actually keep your W going for quite a while. And so you can have your W on two different targets at once. You can see that there's still a W on this target, and now there's a W on this target as well. And this one's even bouncing. So, And then if you have the reduced cooldown, you can actually have your W potentially on three targets at once during fights. So this is all about getting your Ws out on as many targets as possible, repeatedly blinding the targets that need to be blinded, and then using your ult to keep your team topped off when the team fight, you start taking a little bit more damage. You take this against very basic uh, attack heavy comms, particularly melee ones. Illidan, Butcher, uh, Twin Blades Varian, Artanis. If you see a lot of those, take this build and you are in a really, really good spot to win the game without really needing to heal your team that much. This build also does a lot more damage. So because you're going to have these Wind Serpents hitting a whole bunch of people, you'll be doing about as much damage as like the lower assassins in the teams. And that is the quick start guide to Lili. That's going to show you how to dominate as far as having the most healing in games. And if you're going against heavy auto attack teams, how you can completely shut down their team while increasing the damage of your team at the same time. Thank you guys so much for watching and feel free to check out my other videos, especially the other quick start guides.